Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice radical expression. I mean simplifying, not solving. We have the square root of 6 minus 7 times the square root of 3 plus 5 times the square root of 2 minus 7 all over 2 times the square root of 6 minus square root of 3 plus the square root of 2. So we're supposed to simplify this expression and I'll be presenting two methods. There might be a third way to do it, I'm not sure, but if you do know, please let us know in the comment section down below. If you like complex numbers, then go ahead and check out A plus BI, my other channel. In this channel, I focus on algebra number theory and trigonometry. A plus BI is completely dedicated to complex numbers. All right, so looking at this problem, I noticed that the coefficients of uh, root 6 uh, has the ratio 1 to 2. So could the answer be 1 half? No, because if you multiply the numerator by 2, you don't get the denominator. So it's not as simple, right? So it's going to be a little bit more complicated. But what is this equal to? Some type of radical expression. So that's going to be our first method. We're going to go ahead and set this expression equal to a radical. But what kind of radical are we dealing with? Let's find out. Since we have all of these expressions, all of these radicals in our expression, I'm just going to assume that at the end, this is going to turn into something like a times the square root of 6 plus b times the square root of 3 plus c times the square root of 2 plus d, where a, b, c, d are rational numbers. They don't have to be integers, but most probably they are integers, right? Can they all be can some of them be non-integers? That's a good question, but we'll see how that goes. So why did I assume that? Because when you multiply something that contains all these terms together, then you are going to be getting something similar, right? So maybe they form a ring or something like that. I don't know, some type of abstract algebraic structure. So let's go ahead and cross multiply to find the values of a, b, and c. So there's going to be a lot of terms. Uh, you may start with this and multiply by that either way, but I'm going to go ahead and start with this since that's a variable and multiply by 2 root 6. First of all, I'm going to be getting 2a times 6. And you can write it as 12a, but I'm just going to show my work. And then just continue distributing the a root 6 until I'm done and I'm going to go to the next term. Okay? Multiply it by this, you're going to get a times root 18. And then by the third one, we're going to get a root 12. Let's go ahead and write all these down at the end. We're going to simplify everything. Now is the time for distributing this. That's going to give me 2b root 18. 2b or not 2b, yeah, I could say that. Minus b root 3 times root 3. That's going to give us a 3, so it's going to be minus 3b. And then finally by root 2, That'll be b root 6. Now let's go ahead and distribute this and use the next line. Uh, multiply these two together, 2c root 12, and then minus c root 6. And finally, c times root 2 times root 2 is going to be 2 times c, which is 2c. Do you see what I see? 2c or not 2c? Okay. And then we get to distribute the d. And as you can see here, we are multiplying three terms by four, so we should have a total of 12 terms at the end before we simplify everything, of course. So multiplying d by this, 2d root 6, and then minus d root 3. Because d is rational, I can write it before the radical, which is kind of more conventional. And then finally, plus d root 2. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and simplify this. For example, root 18 is... 3 root 2, 9 times 2 is 18, this is 2 root 3, this is 3 root 2 again, and root 6 is just going to stay like that, be careful. Now, when we multiply a by 3 root 2, it's going to be 3a root 2. So now we can go ahead and write this as follows. By the way, notice that the only integer I'm getting from this is the 12a, or the rational term, 2c and 3b. So they're going to get together to form our number in the denominator. By the way, what is this supposed to equal? The numerator, which is root 6 minus 7 root 3 plus 5 root 2 minus 7. 
okay? Now let's go ahead and put together like terms. Start with root six. What do we have for coefficients of root six? I have this one, b root six, so that's gonna be a b. And then I will have a minus c here, so let's go ahead and underline those terms that we use. And then I have the two d, okay? They're all coefficients of root six. Great, so this is done. Now we're gonna look at root three. So we have the 2a root 3, so that's 2a, and then we have the minus d root 3, and I think that's it. That's all, oh, we forgot to do this. This is 2 root 3, that's gonna bring in 4c, yes. Unforeseen coefficient, that is 4c, and all of these are coefficients of root 3. Awesome, this is done as well. Now we are doing root 2. To do root two, I kind of need to consider this. Six root, six b root two, that's a six b. And then I have this minus three a. I wanted to write the positive term first. And then what else do we have? Root two, root two. I'm looking for root two and this one, d root two. So plus d multiply by root two. Okay, finally, we have our rationals and they're gonna be like, 12a, right? And then we have the minus 3b, this one, and finally 2c. Okay, now this is equal to root 6 minus 7 root 3 plus 5 root 2 minus 7, which means this should equal 1, this should equal negative 7, this should equal 5, and this should equal negative 7 because that's my integer, right? Okay, the reason why A, B, C, some of them can be rationals is because 12A, A can be a fraction, but 12A can be an integer, right? Anyway, so you're gonna get, basically, there are four systems, or I mean four equations, that's a system with four equations and four variables, so you should be able to solve it. That's one way to do it. Okay, let me show you the second method. I'm gonna leave it as an exercise for you to find the values of A, B, C, D, and obviously you can use matrices, determinants to find it very easily, Kramer's rule or just a calculator. Don't bother solving it because this is gonna be time consuming. Second method is gonna be pretty interesting because that kind of uses a general idea which is called conjugates, okay, or conjugates, whichever, however you wanna pronounce it. So we're gonna look at the a term that would multiply this and turn it into a rational number. And that will be, if you package these two together, it would look like this, two root six minus root three minus root two. I'm not changing the sign, they're gonna to stay together. And then of course, we have to divide by the same thing. Now here's what you need to do. Distribute all together and see what you're gonna get from here. If I go ahead and distribute this, I'm gonna be getting two times six, which is 12, and then minus root 18, which is three root two, and then I could probably automatically do it, minus two root three. Then these two is gonna give me 14 root 18, but remember root 18 is three root two, so it's gonna be minus 42 root three, I mean two, right? This is root 18, three root two, three times 14, yes, I think that is correct. And then I'm gonna go ahead and multiply by this. That's gonna give me plus seven times three, which is 21. And finally, plus seven root six. That's just the root six. And then I'm gonna go ahead and distribute this, and then this, and then that. And eventually, we should be able to get the answer. But here, let me tell you something. You're gonna get a lot of terms from here. In the denominator, you're gonna get from difference of two squares, something like this, right? Let's go ahead and work on the denominator because that's the most important part. This should give me 24 plus three minus four root 12, right? Double that, don't forget, minus two. This should be 27, 25 minus four root, but this is two root three minus eight root three. So this is gonna equal 25 minus eight root three, which means when I have this, as something in the numerator, of course, a long term, but when we have this in the denominator, we are supposed to multiply by the conjugate again, which is 25 plus eight root three, 
25 plus 8 root 3. And when you multiply these two together from difference of two squares, you're going to get 625 minus 64 times 3, which is 192, and then a bunch of other terms, of course. And then just subtract. Now, how do you subtract these two numbers? That's another uh, cool thing to do if you're subtracting. It's not too hard, actually. We could probably just uh, subtract, and we get 433 which is a really weird number, by the way. I don't know if that's gonna work out nicely, but you get the idea. You have to do the conjug conjugate thing twice, okay? And then you should hopefully get the answer. Do you think Wolfram Alpha can solve this problem? I hope I for did not forget to include it. I think I did for remember to include it, yes. <laughs> Aha, Wolfram Alpha doesn't understand your query, too bad. When I use equals question mark, it couldn't do it. But if you change the prompting a little bit, yes, yay, Wolfram Alpha is able to do it. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.